We're here today talking about the Stella Light from Light and Motion, the CLX8. It's an LED 8000 lumen light, super, super bright. Yeah, so normally we take our big mono lights when we do photo shoots, but there's many times when they're just not practical. We can't put a stand on the ground in some cities that we work in, and sometimes the areas are just too tight to work in. That's right, so we actually took this out to San Francisco, brought a model along with us, and we took some shots. We wanna kinda of go through these shots with you to show you how the light performed and kinda of walk you through what our yeah. thinking was as we are using the light. So let's kinda of just jump into it, Mark. Yeah, so let's look at this first image here. So this is your image that you took, but uh, this was like right under the rotunda at the top of the stairs when you enter the city hall. So we wanna take it inside and we wanna shoot also outside. So these yeah. inside images. So this one here is really, really interesting. One of the things that like really impressed us right off the bat was the size of this light yeah. and the power and the color temperatures, those three things. And when I'm talking about the size of the light, we could carry this right in. In fact, we went through security, through metal detectors, nobody even batted an eye, no. right? It wasn't like we had these big old monolights. But when you look at this picture, like you can see her skin tone is awesome. And the thing that surprised us so much is we were really far back. You can see how far back we actually were when we were taking this picture. Yeah. So these lights go out, those 8,000 lumens, we weren't even, I believe, at full power at no, this No, we were point, like half power. Could, could give us enough light to go travel, you know, 12, 15 feet in an area, again, you said it, color temperature. Yep. It, that's what blew me away. The first thing about these Stella lights is they seem to be a tiny bit warmer than daylight, which we love. It's perfect. For skin tones, but look at this picture. You've got incandescent bulbs that are very yellow, up above from the rotunda, you've got natural light that was very uh, blue coming in yep. that day. And then you balance it out with this light and it gives perfect skin tones. Into a dark background. So yes. just amazing. Like when we went to the next spot, right? So we moved around a lot. It, now, the San Francisco City Hall is considered to be the most beautiful government building actually in the United States. Now yeah. I've been to Washington DC, it's better than, than the Capitol. This, it's, it's And we love the fact that they're very photo friendly. They'll have weddings going on all hours of the day there when I they're open. six weddings going on. Exactly, right and so, so allowing us to have this and using our voice activated light stand, meaning you were holding it for That's me, right. I was holding it for you, right? And we used it just kind of run in gun style. We came up upon this hallway that you can see this picture here. Beautiful natural light coming through, mm -hmm. right? We could have taken this picture using natural light. In fact, we did. We did. The problem is that the direction of the light wasn't very conducive to flatter the face. No. So unless we moved her back into a pool light and then had her look into the window, we wanted this particular shot. The only way we were gonna do it is to light her straight on, yep. not straight on, but off to the side a little bit. We pulled out a, just a, a, a nice umbrella. small umbrella, popped out, handheld it with the umbrella, and we took these amazing shots. This is what we love though, this hallway People were going back and forth and back and forth. So we were trying to wait for our turn to like, let's jump in, yep. take it now. These lights, we couldn't do that with a light stand no, and a big a light, in the way. it's in the way. People are trying to pass through. We could just easily go, excuse me, and, and we're out of the way. No, it so. works so well because we were able to put on the umbrella right through the built-in umbrella holder hole, right? Pop it on, collapse it down if we need to, yeah. and just carry it on. But this, the thing that really, I, I guess word right to use to surprise me, is like, look again, it looks just like the light is spilling through these windows. Yeah. If you look at a before and after picture, I think we have one up here, yep. There you go. So you can see that you took one natural light, right? What do we have to do? We had to blow everything out. Yeah, so you lose all that definition. Look in that hallway, you don't see, you know, all of those beautiful pillars and the, the stacking of light when you shoot it with natural light. And the light isn't really that flattering on her face. Yeah. But we introduce and we go back, let's go back to the one now that we shot with the Stella. Now we can expose the background a little bit darker, get more of that texture of that background yep. in there. It just, it, it makes her face pop. Big, big difference. And again, color temperature. Totally, totally. So this next picture here, right? Again, it's one of those kind of difficult situations where, you know, I've got incandescent lights. The light coming across the top of her hair yes. was actually coming in through that skylight. Remember that big skylight? Yeah, the, the big the top, the round of the rotunda yeah. has these lights coming in. That's giving her that hair light. Now, I don't and have a before and after picture here. No. But the before and after is pretty striking. Like, the, she looked dark, right? And we tried to, you know, do it natural. Everything just blew out in the background. Yep. But using this light, again, the color temperature was perfect. Yeah. We've used tons of LED lights. Nothing has done this well, because the picture that I'm seeing right now on the screen, that's exactly how my eyes saw it that totally. day that we took the photos. Yep. So big, big difference from any other LED product that we use that kind of turned everything blue, yeah. right? 
So if we kind of move on, this, this is really interesting. And this goes back to why we love these lights, yeah. is the portability running gun shooting. So what happened here? Yeah, so this one's kind of a neat, you know, it's not like the greatest image, but we were getting ready to get back on the elevator to go back I already hit the button. You'd hit the button and I went, Steve, wait, look at this. And we saw this beautiful framing in the background and we said, Caitlin, hurry, stand right here. People are walking up and down this little tiny skinny hallway. We're able to hold the light again, everything's handheld, pop up the umbrella and get this amazing like, shot. In fact, we were totally, with the light totally against the wall, right? Yeah. I mean, we were pushed all the way back. And that allowed us to, to do that before the elevator actually arrived. Yeah. And bing! Because there was no other light other than fluorescence in that hallway. That was ugly. And it was ugly light, but we were able to get a great shot off that quick. So we heard the bang of the elevator. We all jumped in and yep. rode it Close down. the umbrella and So off pretty we went. awesome. Like to be able to do that, we could not have done that if we had to put no. up a light stand and set our lights up and everything. And just really, really cool. So after City Hall, yes. we moved into. Chinatown. Now, Chinatown in San Francisco is one of the most beautiful Chinatowns in the world, apart from being in China itself. Yeah, outside of China, it, it's the... It's fantastic. And what we love about it is all these alleyways within Chinatown. Every alleyway has its own little character. Yep. It's got its own texture. And we got into this particular alleyway. What we wanted to do was we took it from the inside. We knew we could overpower inside lights. Yeah. But how is it going to do in the sunlight? So we went into the alleyway and we had this great strong backlit sun and we were able to use the light to fill in so it was pretty cool and this this i think was this was just bare you know us just holding the light basically yeah, it was no modifier no and that modifier was by design on. yep because we wanted we wanted it to look just like the sunshine right yeah. when you're looking at a picture that's taken in the sun you get sharp sharp shadows right we wanted this to be like there's nothing lighting it other than natural and light natural coming light. through and it did spectacular yeah Spectacular. To get results like this and to be able to hand hold the light, you know, we had each other to hold the light, but we easily could have held it in one hand and shot with the other mm -hmm. hand. That light weighs nothing. It weighs nothing. It's really, really cool. And this was, again, we had this, I think, at 50% power at this point, maybe 60, um, but it was doing great. In fact, if we pull up this next picture, we were like, okay, let's, let's pull in close. Yeah. Let's see what it looks like. Now you can see it's a sharp shadow. Yep. Sharp shadow on the nose, sharp shadow under the chin. But it's not. It doesn't look unnatural. I, I've heard the term, it looks like beautiful sunlight. Totally. That's what it looks like. And it doesn't have an off-putting color to it. It looks very natural. But what I, what's striking to me about this, and this is because of this, this LED light, is look at her eyeballs. Not just the catch light that it caught, but how clean that color is coming yes. through the eyes. The catch light's actually on her lips without her nose being blown yes. out. That happens so often where like the- The, the bridge of the nose bridge gets of the nose, blown or out. Or you get the spots in the forehead. It's not there. We got beautiful backlighting. Just a shot yeah. wide open. So I was, I'm very impressed, and I believe it's like a 120 degree spread of light, mm -hmm. but it just gives you this even pool of light where I've, so many years, I've seen LEDs, they just, they feel like they're very pinpointy. Totally. Um, when you use ones that have multiple diodes in it, it feels like you've got these little weird cross shadows when you zoom in on it. It's just, it's got its own feel. Yep. With this, it doesn't. Yeah, so I was, I mean, we were, we were pretty blown away. And again, we were blown away with how the color turned out. Yeah. It looks totally like Caitlin's face looked yeah. looking at it. And that's the cool thing. In a it's totally like, different environment. We went from this weird indoor to a consistent outdoor yep. and got the identical results. So, you know, Mark and I have not made the full leap to mirrorless yet. We're still using DSLRs. We mm -hmm. both have mirrorless cameras, but we our main workhorses are Nikon DSLRs. This is incredible for using with mirrorless because the wissy wig, right? Yep. What you see is what you get. But it still works with DSLRs, and I want everybody to know that, that using LED lights, I can see with my eyeball exactly what the yes. light is doing, and that's, that's important. Yeah, there was so often that you would just look at it before you even pulled the camera, and you're like, you need to get a little closer, I'm mm -hmm. not seeing it, or you need to move it over so the shadow yep. moves over, and you can see it right away. And really cool, and that's something you can't do with a flash, right? You have right. to take the picture, readjust, take the picture, readjust. Same, same picture, essentially, but what do we do? We just pull back on this one? It does. To me, this is one of those pictures that just, it has the feel of, if you told me we didn't use any lights at all, only then, other than looking and going, ooh, there's a catch light in her eye, I would go, yeah, this looks like it's naturally mm -hmm. lit. It totally does. It's actually a beautiful shot. And what I, what I love is I, you know, even though it's, it's a very shallow depth of field, I still see the detail because we were able to yeah. darken that background. So we played around a little bit. I don't really have a, I don't have a before or after for these images, but, Early on, we took some without the light, mm -hmm. and one of the things that happened was immediately you lost the texture of 
the alleyway yep. because everything got too bright in the background. The stuff that's hanging on the, the laundry that's hanging out just turns into these ugly glowing white uh, blobs that are competing for attention totally. within the image. Where totally. Now that we lit her up. And I know on the, these the shots, again, because we were, you know, we were tr testing out the light, we shot at about 40% power. So we had a lot of reserve to go. Yeah. Which is, blows me away. And one of the other things is too, is that that whole day, we purposely wanted to have everything kind of a real natural feel. And we shot everything right about F4, almost all day mm -hmm. long, inside and outside. We were kind of wanted to push the light and see, you know, at F4, could you do it? Because anybody can shoot at 1.2 and go, I gathered a bunch of light. Right. Of course you're gonna gather a bunch of light. But at F4, which is where a lot of times we live when we're shooting portraits, yep. is that that, it, it performed amazingly, so. So, you know, we shot, for a while in Chinatown, got great, great pictures. If you ever have a chance to go to Chinatown, yeah. definitely do it. You and spent then, the entire day there. We did, and, and what we or we could have, absolutely. Then we just drove over the Golden Gate Bridge, went up to the Marin Headlands yes. to a place called Hawk Hill. Yeah, what a beautiful day. So the sun was starting to set because it's setting a lot earlier now, and the fog had rolled in. So this sunlight is making this fog glow, this brilliant white. You can almost not look at it. It was so bright. So we have this blinding white background with. Caitlin standing with this beautiful sea of fog behind her. Yeah, and fact, one of the things see one of the pictures we here. pulled out our light, and uh, the only way that we really could get any light on her face was to get the uh, Fresnel on there mm -hmm. and get it extremely a couple feet away from her. Then we could see it. We could use it. But you know what? That's for a headshot. We're looking for that epic shot. We couldn't do it. This is where we had to pull out the big. Yep. Uh, monolites. And it, it comes down to using the right tool yeah. at the right time. This was not the right tool at that time. For that spot. Just wasn't. That that's really what we want you to understand is that we're not ever saying that one particular light is the catch all for everything. Mm -hmm. It's we have a toolbox and inside the toolbox we have to pull out the right ones in the alleyway. That was the right tool. Yep. Inside the courthouse or the uh, it city hall. The right tool. It was definitely the right tool. So we, we thought, you know, up in the uh, the Marin Headlands and Hawk Hill, they have a lot of bunkers and old tunnels from the 1940s. Um, we thought, hey, let's pop into one of these tunnels yes. and actually see, because we, we love tunnel light. Right? Yes, yeah, so it's gorgeous. But the tunnel light was coming actually from the, the other direction. Yeah, because the sun had been setting, so it's on the back of the tunnel. So we were taking these pictures. Now, we could expose it where her face is exposed, yeah. but then everything is way blown out in the background. Yep. So what did we do? We slightly underexposed, brought out the Stella again. Yeah. Popped at the power. I think we were almost full power, actually, on this we one. We did. And it was um, one of the things. We wanted also that catch light in the eye. We weren't getting a catch light because the sky was getting dull the way she was mm -hmm. She was looking to the east. And so and there was And we wanted to be able to happened. catch some of these reflections in her dress. So she had a sequin dress on, and we wanted to make sure that yeah. things were, were looking like their shape to the picture, too. So Correct. Um, what blew me away, and we've said it over and over <laughs> again, is the color temperature, yes. right? You look at that tunnel, look how yellow that background is, because that's what the color is inside that, yeah. that uh, tunnel. And we've got beautiful skin tones. Just amazing, just amazing. And I think we were probably six feet away. With the light, holding with the, the light, light yeah. yes. So, yep. you know, people think you have to be that close. These lights actually do perform really well. Now, up in the, the Marin Headlands area, they have these gates that actually can close off the tunnel. Yeah. They, they, each of the they're tunnels. rusted open now at this point. But Oh, the um, bars are so patinaed perfectly with this rust. We love that kind of grungy Ugh. look. And so we said, hey, Caitlin, why don't you go behind those bars, right in between the wall and the, yeah. the gate. We're going to put you in prison. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's see what happens. So we, we took a couple pictures. And they look good. They, they, they were okay, right? I mean, we kind of see what the vision were we were yeah. working. Then what do we do? We had this beautiful natural light because it was really close to the entrance. Yep. And then all of a sudden you went... What if I brought the Stella in and I backlit her and it looks like there's maybe a big light coming Just from up top? Just enough light coming in from the top. and It was magic. This shot right here, I love this shot. You know, it's not something that, you, if you're not a photographer, you're not going to notice it. But yep. when you start going, yeah, I see that light coming down from the top. It feels like it's just falling down upon her. It just looks like this beautiful light. Without it, the pop is gone. Totally. So, totally. so yeah, it, it looked amazing. And that, that really was again, we could get this little light in between the bars. I mean, this, you know, her, her nose is really pretty much at the yeah. level of bars, so we were able to just kind of squeeze this thing in. And, and just it hang down. it over her head a little bit from behind. So, so, I mean, that's, you know, that was kind of our, our day with her, right? And I gotta tell you, I'm super impressed. Yeah. 
The, and the other thing we didn't really talk about is the thing that I'm so impressed with is the build quality. These things are bulletproof. Yeah, I mean, like, we I mean, there's some heft thing. to this thing. They're U.S. manufactured, right in California, and uh, it, it just has a good feel to it. When you buy this, you know you have a piece of quality equipment in your hand. Yeah, this one is is water. They call it water resistant, Correct. right? So, so you, you can, can use it in the rain. In the rain. Mm -hmm. Um, they say that's fine. There's another one that we've been testing out that we'll do some more videos on called the, the 2000. That one's completely submersible. Yeah, up to like 150 yeah, meters. Yeah, pretty incredible. You can go diving with but it. But this one, you can feel comfortable using it out in the rain, no problem at all. The so. only reason it's not submersible is because it has a fan to cool down yep. because it's running those 8,000 lumens, but what a beautiful so piece of equipment. They also have a model called the 8000, right? And it looks very similar to this. The difference is that this one is is made for photography, right? Yeah. It's got these clips on the end, which are made for mounting modifiers. So you can put a a Ellen Chrome the Ranger, Quadra, Quadra. Ranger yep. you know, beauty dish softbox yep. on it. You can. It's got a Pro Photo adapter. They've got a Ellen Chrome to back to Bowen's adapter. All these different yep. things. So. But they also have their own adapter. So they actually have, like I said, the Fresnels, barn doors, the barn doors. They have a, they've they've got, like a dome cap. Correct. Thing, all so. kinds of things in there that work fantastic. They're easy to use. Um, I just, this is one of those ones that I highly recommend if you're looking for a solution for a portable handheld LED light. We have not yet found anything that competes. No, with. And, we, and we thank you know thank you Light Motion for sending this out so we can take a look at it. Um, I want one for my camera bag. Like, yeah. Oh, definitely. The, the thought of having this with me. <laughs> And my other lights, like this huh? This is so many times where I can get into places that yeah. I wouldn't be able to get into with yep. the other lights. And it's like all things, we can't stress this enough, it's just another tool to have in the toolbox. Yep. It's not the tool to use every time, but there are so many opportunities to use a piece of equipment like this. And we're excited totally. to have been able to try it out. So we're gonna go ahead and put the link to uh, Light and Motion's website yeah. in the description below. You can check them out, but I tell you, good, good stuff. So. As always, we thank you for uh, taking a look at this and love to have you like and subscribe our videos, subscribe to our channel and like our videos. Um, but I think most important, yeah, don't forget. Don't forget. Say, say sushi. sushi.